Hello, everyone. This is Lisa Pugh with the ARC Wisconsin, joined by my co-presenter, Cindy Badeau. And you are in the Growing Stronger Together by Staying Healthy and Active session. And before we get started, we'd like to turn it over to our interpreters for some instructions. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Uh, we will be having interpretation into Spanish for today's session. I will be giving the instructions now just in Spanish uh, since we will not be having Spanish to English interpretation today. Bueno, buenas tardes a todos. Los organizadores de este evento tienen la firme determinación de facilitar la comunicación bilingüe en la reunión de hoy. Mi nombre es Mojde, mi co-intérprete es Jamie y estamos representando a la Interpreters Cooperative of Madison. Si usted se unió a la reunión con su teléfono, por favor asegúrese de entrar con el app de Zoom para poder acceder a la interpretación. Esta función no está disponible en los Chromebook. Para escuchar la interpretación al español, por favor seleccione su canal de idioma haciendo clic abajo a la derecha de su pantalla de Zoom en el globito si usa una computadora o en los tres puntitos si está conectada por teléfono. Seleccione interpretación, luego español y luego picarle en done o listo. Si tiene cualquier problema, por favor avísenos por el, la, cajilla de, la casilla de chat o con su micrófono. Muchas, muchas gracias. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Well, once again, welcome. I'm Lisa Pugh with the ARC Wisconsin, and you are in the session Growing Stronger Together by Staying Healthy and Active. If you are applying for continuing education credits, please make sure your full name is on your Zoom screen so we can take care of that. Now let's get rolling for the next hour. Some quick introductions here, as I mentioned, my name is Lisa Pugh and I'm the director of a statewide organization called the ARC Wisconsin, which advocates for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families. And the ARC is part of a national network of 600 chapters across the country and 14 local chapters in Wisconsin. And I just spent a lot of time in the state capitol advocating. And then Sydney and I also do this really cool class together, which is a health matters training that we're gonna give you a taste of today. Um, also, I am the parent of an adult daughter with developmental disabilities. She's 22 and Erica is not here today because she is hard at work. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to my co-presenter, Sydney, for her introduction. Hi, I'm Sydney Badeau. Um, I'm a disability advocate in Southern Wisconsin, I'm a board member for the Wisconsin Board for People with Development Disabilities and president of the Wisconsin Youth Leadership Forum. Um, I tend to stay pretty active. I live out in the country. Um, that's basically it. And she gets lots of steps in, right, Sydney? Yeah. Um, what some things that we're going to be talking about is, um, how to eat proper nutrition and drink enough water. Um, like what does it mean to be healthy? Um, how to get active and how to get exercise into your daily lives, um, and how to set healthy goals, um, at the end of the um, lesson today, you'll be provided with a goal setting sheet to help you set your own um, healthy eating and exercising goals. I'm not sure. Um, what does being healthy mean to you? Um, you can put your answers in the chat box. Um, of what being healthy means to you. Um, 
the purpose of this lesson is to help you think about how to manage your own health and what is important to you, meaning how to take care of your health as a lifelong process so it is not achieved overnight and it's something to continue throughout your entire life. Um, people think about health in many different ways. Um, people's definition of what it means to be healthy can vary quite a bit. Um, our bodies and minds need to work together to keep us healthy. Did anything, anybody put anything in the chat for what they think it means to be healthy, Sydney? Uh, no, just the interpreter um, put in the chat. Um, Chad just said 10,000 steps a day at least and watching your sugar. And ODSC said getting plenty of sleep. Um, someone just said being able to move without huffing and puffing. And Beth just said eating whole foods and moving your body every day as well as getting enough sleep. Um, someone else said losing weight if you're overweight. And someone else said exercise and eating well. Um, let's go out real fast. Lots of and, good thoughts there. Yeah. Um, someone said being healthy means being free of illness, not needing prescription medicine. Um, a lot of um, exercise in the chat. I like that. Weightlifters. All right, lots of good ideas here. So let's walk through this one, Sydney. All right. Um, let's look at the pictures and talk about if um, there are ways that make you feel healthy. Um, the first one is states, I feel good. Um, does that mean you feel healthy? Yeah. Um, the next one is I exercise. Does that make you feel healthy? Um, the next one is you are happy. Um, does that make you feel healthy? Feel free to uh, either wave on the screen if your camera is on or use one of the reactions to give a thumbs up or, or not, if, if you agree with what Sydney is saying. Um, someone said in the chat, all of these are healthy. Um, the next one is I can relax. Um, does that make you feel healthy? Um, the next one is I weigh what's right for me. And does that make you feel healthy? Uh, the next picture is I eat foods that are good for me. Uh, does that make you feel healthy? I see some people eating their lunch. We might be asking them later what they're having for lunch. <laughs> uh, the next one is I have a friend that cares for me. Um, does that make you feel healthy? Um, I see quite a few people saying in chat that all of these make them feel healthy. So that's good to see. Um, I, the next one is I have someone special um, in their life, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that makes you feel healthy. Um, being healthy can mean a variety of things. Um, it can mean not feeling sick, um, feeling good and being able to do the things you want to do, eating healthy foods, feeling comfortable where you live or work and with family and friends, exercising and staying physically fit, feeling happy and satisfied. Yeah, maybe not the traditional things that some people think about, right? 
Some people think it's just about if you exercise or you don't exercise or if you eat fruits and vegetables or you eat junk food. But I think what Sydney is saying is it's more than just that. It really is rest and um, you know, having people around you that care about you and feeling good about yourself. That's all a part of being healthy too. So now we're gonna ask the big question. We're gonna take a poll and I'm gonna put a question on the screen and we want you to answer. But um, the way that the question is in, you, in there, you'll see that there are two questions and we only want you to answer the first one, okay? And the question is gonna ask you, do you think you are healthy? And it's either a yes or a no. And be honest, and then we'll share the results and we'll see how the people in this session, what do we have? How many people? We have about 50 people in here. We're gonna see how everybody answers, okay? So look on your screen for the question. I'm gonna share it in a second. Remember, only answer that first question that you see, okay? Here we go. What is your answer? Do you think you are healthy? Yes or no? You gotta look at your screen to be able to click on that. Yes or no? Oh. Okay. I see some people are answering the second question, which we haven't gotten to yet. So just focus on question number one. Do you think you are healthy? See how many people are answering here. Keep keep the answers coming. I don't have nearly enough people answering yet. They say it won't let you submit unless both are answered. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Okay, go ahead and answer. And we'll just have to relaunch the poll. Sorry about that. Go <laughs> ahead and just put number one in the answer for the second one since you don't know what the question is. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lisa. Hey there. It's Lindale. How are you? Hi, Lindale. Hi. <laughs> hey, Go um, ahead and just put in group number one in the answer for the second question. Sorry, that got messed up. <laughs> All right. Should we end the poll, Sydney? Do people need more time or can we end it just to see what people say? All right, let's share the poll results and then we'll talk about it. So this was just for fun. Okay, sharing the results. Can you see the results, everyone? Yep. Yep. So Sydney, can you read that? What does it say? Uh, looks like 77% of the people said yes, they think they're healthy and about 16% said no, they're not. Um, and about 6% said they're not sure if they're healthy or not. Okay. Hey, that's pretty good, right? But we've got some work to do. So let's talk about, well, what does it actually mean to be healthy and what are some ideas on how to be healthier, right? Okay. Thank you for doing that poll with us. So Cindy, why don't you talk to them a little bit about um, physical activity and some, even some of the things that you do to stay active. All right, um, what is physical activity? Um, physical oh, act Go ahead, I know I was supposed to do this, but you get started, Sydney. Um, physical activity can be something as simple as um, walking to get your mail, or it can be going for a run or yoga or something like that. Um, Sometimes it's good to even like just get out for one minute and then progress your way up. Um, for this year, I had my step goal for five and a half million steps. So um, not everyone does that. Um, I just live out in the country and do that. So um, I'll let Lisa take it away. Did you guys hear that? Did you hear how many steps she said? Five and a half million million that's a lot of steps right wow that's cool sydney okay so physical activity just like sydney said 
using your muscles to move your body. It can include sports. Um, it's just, it's not just sports, but it can include things like basketball, uh, football, um, playing frisbee, other things like that. But it also can mean walking like Sydney does. If you have a dog or some other pet, maybe you do a lot of walking too. It also can be something like stretching or gardening. So um, here, these are some pictures of things that either may or may not be physical activity. So I'm gonna walk through the pictures and I'm gonna look on the screen to see if you guys give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Can horseback riding be physical activity? What, Katie? Can, can horseback riding be physical activity? What do you guys think? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of core muscles, right? Core like in your middle, for sure. Okay. Walking, yes or no, physical activity. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree, yes. Reading? No. Eh, meh, yeah, probably not, right? <laughs> you're not really moving much when you're reading. Uh, dancing? Yep. Who here yep. likes to dance? Me. <laughs> Are you guys gonna dance at 4.30 today? Nope. I'm gonna be there, come on guys. <laughs> uh running running yep. oh yeah. yeah what about sleeping yep you'd have to be a pretty active sleeper <laughs> i'm gonna say no uh weightlifting i like to lift mm -hmm. weights who else likes to lift weights mm -hmm. uh gardening if you're gardening, you can break a sweat. Sydney's, Sydney's a gardener, right, Sydney? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen Sydney pushing a wheelbarrow of, of weeds and whatnot. What about raking? This is the time of year for that. Yes or no? Physical activity. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's also hard work. Bowling? Who's a bowler? I used to be. Bowling's fun. That's, that's physical activity. Uh, I see Joshy. Joshy is a, are you a special Olympics bowler, Joshy? Yes. Yep. Um, eating, physical activity? Yep. Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna veto that one. I'm saying no. <laughs> no. Uh, no. What about mopping? Yes. That's yes. like, it's like rake, kind of similar to raking, right? You probably can also break a sweat doing a lot of mopping. How clean is your house? That's what I want to know. <laughs> um, having a picnic, physical activity, yes or no? No. Yeah, I, yes, if you well, have activities to go along with it. Probably not what that lady is doing in this picture here. I'd say no. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes when you go on a picnic, you might play a volleyball game or take a hike or something. So you'd have to in include something else, right? Okay, so clearly lots of ideas on how to do more physical activity, right? It's not just weightlifting or going for a jog. You can do lots of other things. So let's talk about that other part of becoming healthier. So we talked about the activity. Now we wanna talk about your, your food. Richard Brissett, who was eating his lunch while, while he was listening to our session today. We're gonna to talk to you about your lunch later, Richard, but Sydney, why don't you talk to us about healthy eating? All right, what does healthy eating look like? Um, it can look like a lot of different things for people. Um, some of what it is, is eat, trying to eat a certain um, portion size of different types of food and trying to eat um, the right amount of fruits and vegetables and meat um, and limit things like ice cream and cake. Who wants to share in the chat what they had for lunch today? Who wants to type in the chat? Um, someone said fruits and veggies. Mm. I Tacos. hope that means you ate that for lunch today. Oh, I'm getting lots of answers. Oh, good. Uh, apples and pizza, bagels, grilled cheese, and pears. Mm. 
Yum. Tater tot hot dish. Tacos. Yum. Uh, that sounds good. Green salad with blueberries and raspberries. Protein mm -hmm. shake, fruits and vegetables. Um, some cone rotisserie chicken and salad. Chicken patty on a bun. Um, oranges, chips, tomatoes, and milk. Uh, yeah, lots of that's salads. Interesting. I'm getting hungry, Sydney. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> Those are all mostly really healthy thoughts, right, Sid? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go. Let's go talk a little bit more about which ones are healthy and maybe not so much. All right. Which of these foods are healthy for you? Um, how about potato chips? Who thinks potato chips are healthy foods for you to eat? No. That's correct. They're not. Um, what about grapes or raisins? Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, what about pretzels? Uh, take or leave it. Uh, French fries. No. Oh, no. Uh, um, ice cream. No. <laughs> In moderation. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't want to give up our ice cream. <laughs> popcorn without butter. A trick one. Yeah, uh -huh. without butter. Um, hot dogs. No. That is correct. Um, apple juice, another trick one. Yes, because it's made from apples. Uh, yeah, we just got to watch the sugar in it. Um, mm. Fruit yogurt. Yeah, yeah. yogurt's good for you. Uh, apple. What was that? You cut out apples. Yes. Yep. Uh, tacos. Yep. Regular soda. No. Not really. <laughs> no. Um, bananas. Yeah. Yeah, but they have sugar and give it to natural sugar. So. Uh, cookies. No. Nope. I love Correct. cookies. <laughs> Strawberries. Yeah. Good job, everybody. All right. Now, this is that second part of our poll, the question that you guys already saw. So, Cindy, why don't you introduce the question, tell them how they might want to answer it, and then I'll share the poll again. All right, um, which group of foods should you not eat very often and why? Um, so the first um, group of foods has some meats and eggs. Um, the second group looks like it has mostly dairy products. The third group has cookies, cakes, um, candy no bars, cookies. and french fries. Nope. The fourth group has vegetables um, and some fruits in it. So which of these food groups should you not eat very often? Number three. It's, I don't think it's going to let me relaunch the poll. Let me try one more time. No, it won't let me do it. So we can just answer the question live, Sydney. Okay. Well, again, looks, let's see if people put in the chat. Are they typing in the chat? Yeah. Um, yeah. Looks like they're typing number three. Yep. Is yeah. Everybody really, in agreement? Is anybody else naming something else? Looks like they're all saying number three. Yeah. Would you say, Sydney, that you can never eat um, if you're trying to be healthy? That you can never eat cookies or cake or maybe a candy yeah. bar? What would you answer to that, Sydney? Um, I would say I just know. um occasionally, so like not very often. You not probably daily. make sure that most of your day and most days you're eating some of these other foods and 
keep keeping the others for special occasions or a treat, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, we're going to show a video here. And I know I was in another session where the audio didn't sound so great, but this is a short video. And I think that you'll just appreciate the pictures and then we'll talk about it after it's done. Okay, here we go. So those were, I'm just going to stop sharing for one second. So that video was kind of showing you some foods that maybe you eat more regularly and just giving you an idea about other ways to swap them out or things that are healthier that you might choose instead. Um, did any of those choices surprise you or were there any foods that you saw that you might try instead? Feel free to unmute yourself and share if there was something that you saw that you liked that was a healthier choice. I think the cookies and nuts um, uh, were very um, surprising to me, you know. To choose nuts over cookies sometimes? True. Yeah, I like nuts. Uh, who else likes to eat nuts sometimes? I mean, I do, yeah. I see Sarah too. Yeah, like, um, and Curtis says, or Car Carrie says that she likes nuts. Um, I, yeah, like nuts, they can be flavorful. They're nice and crunchy. They're easy to take along with you. If you're a cookie person, and I'm a cookie person, I would just try to do um, nuts sometimes. I see so Allison says raw, unsalted. I agree. That's your best choice. It depends try on not, the nut. Who, say again? It depends on the nut. Depends <laughs> on the nuts. You don't want to eat a lot of nuts, but nuts can be really filling too, right? Were there any other swaps or different foods in that video that you guys liked or that, you, that you've eaten before? So food swap is a really good way to think about trying something new to maybe take that thing that you like, but you know isn't as good for you and just eating a little bit less of it. I know when Cindy and I taught this class before, there was somebody in there that really likes their regular soda, their Coke. And, you know, regular soda has a lot of sugar in it and it's not really very good for you. So you should, you can come up with a plan to maybe instead drink a little more water, maybe some flavored water, or maybe switch to diet soda or half and half. And just to try to make a plan to do a little bit less, you don't have to get rid of it all together because sometimes that's really hard when you're trying to be healthier. You don't want to make something that's so hard that you can't kind of stick to it. So even with exercise, 
to do some simple changes or make a make a promise to do something a little bit more than what you're doing now and then just try more to do more of that thing so uh, maybe taking a walk every night around the block and then the next week you add more time to your walk um, making a game or a challenge for yourself. You can do the same with food where you're not getting rid of that soda or those cookies, but maybe just saving them for special, special times or doing a food swap like in that video. All right. Wh what do we see in the chat here, Sydney? Uh, do other uh, people have ideas on that? Yeah. Um, some dark chocolate ideas. Um, Someone said oatmeal is a good option as long as there isn't added sugar. Um, Desi said she can't unmute, but she said um, diet soda isn't good for you. Um, that is someone, true. I think, yeah, diet soda, what you could, if you were trying to do, yes, interpreter. Um, someone said bananas have a ton of sugar in their nutritional values. And someone said they can't unmute, so I don't know. Okay. Some people can and some people can't. So just feel free to write in the chat. Um, frozen yogurt instead of ice cream, someone said. That's a good swap. And I think there are ways to sweeten things um, without just sugar, right? You can use honey. Um, you can use other sorts of natural sweeteners. Sometimes fruit um, is even a good way to sweeten something up. I like the idea around dark chocolate because dark chocolate is also healthier for you than a lot of other sweet things. So if you have a sweet tooth, Definitely try a little bit of dark chocolate, not like a whole bar, but like a little square sometimes is really tasty. Yes, I see Pam's like, yes, I agree, Pam. All right, we are going to talk about some goals here because all of these great ideas that you guys have, I'm assuming if you're in this session that, um, that you wanna be healthier, like you wanted to learn something about how are other people getting healthy. So it's important to set goals um, and to maybe make some new habits. So that's one of the things that Sydney and I do in the class that we teach, the Health Matters class, is everyone works on some individual goals. And the, the most important thing about goals is that they actually be something you can meet. We call that achievable. It's something you can do and you can you know, mark progress toward. And so here's some ideas on some goals that you could think about. And then we can talk about how you might make that an achievable goal. So you could have a goal about learning new things, a goal to just feel better um, in case you have some pain of some kind. Maybe you want that pain to be less. If you have a, I have a sore hip, I want my hip to hurt less. So I've been doing some regular stretching. Um, maybe you wanna get in shape. We can talk about setting goals around that. Um, maybe you have high blood pressure. Unfortunately, I also have high blood pressure. So I'm working on diet and other changes to fix that. Um, maybe you want to lose weight or you wanna control your weight a little bit more. Maybe you just wanna make some healthier choices. Maybe you wanna feel less tired. You wanna feel happier. Maybe you wanna meet some new people. Cause remember we talked about being healthy can also be about having special people who care about you in your life. We can make goals around meeting and um, making new friends. Maybe you wanna look better. We can uh, have goals around that related to your health. Uh, it's lower cholesterol, improve your strength. Maybe it's around your balance. These are all different ideas that you might turn into a goal for yourself. 
So when we talked about that word, you know, achievable or attainable, that all comes from this. Um, a lot of people say that when you set a goal, it should be a SMART goal. And SMART stands for something. And here are the different words that it stands for. If you want a goal that you're actually going to meet, uh, you should think about writing it down and making sure that it does all of these things. So SMART stands for specific. So you kind of want to narrow it down. Um, measurable. How will you measure it? How will you actually know that you're making progress? So like you heard Sydney say, she has step goals. She actually has that written down? How many steps does she want to have at the end of a week or at the end of the month? And then what's her yearly goal? It's a measurable goal. She can look at her notes. Um, attainable. Attainable is a word that means, is this possible? Because you, if you have a goal of wanting to make new friends, you probably shouldn't set a goal that says, I want to be married next year <laughs> because that might not be attainable. But let's say, let's set some goals and mark some progress toward meeting new people and finding people who like the same things that I do. That's definitely an attainable goal that might lead to a really good friend or a few new friends for you relevant. Is this something that's really going to make a positive change in my life? Something important to me that um, is not just something fun to work on, but that actually means something to me. That's what the word relevant means. And then timely. You do have to set a time, time frame. That means you're holding yourself accountable. Like you're actually going to work on this. You're not just saying, here's my goal and you don't tell anybody about it or you're in our presentation today and you say, well, I'm going to tell that I want to lose 10 pounds. Well, by what time do you want to lose those pounds? And what are your goals to work on that? How much do you want to uh, show progress in one month? That's all about setting a SMART goal. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So examples of that. I want to eat vegetables twice a day for two weeks. You could do that, especially if you're not doing it now. You might want to start by writing down some vegetables that you like, that you're going to shop for, and maybe some new vegetables that you want to try. That would be a really great health goal that um, you could easily reach that goal. And it's probably gonna have other benefits for you other than just eating the vegetables. Or by the end of the month, I want to walk a mile one minute faster than I can right now. So you're taking your phone with you or maybe some sort of a watch and you're timing yourself for how long does it take you to walk one mile? Or how long does it take you to walk around the two blocks by your house? In one month, you wanna walk that one minute faster. That's kind of a cool goal. If you wanna be more physically active, that would be something that'd be pretty easy to reach. Cindy, do you have any other ideas on, on goals that are attainable or ones that you've set for yourself? Um, people could try to eat more fruits or veggies or, um, set a certain number of food swaps they wanted to do. Um, do you or maybe, wanna, yeah, go ahead, Sid. Or maybe plan, um, certain times of the day to go out and exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, and, or, you know, it's going to be winter here soon. Sorry to tell you. Um, but we might have to move our exercise inside. So what's a way that you could still get your physical activity, even if you're not able to go outside for those walks anymore because the sidewalk is too icy? What are some, do some people want to put some ideas in the chat around physical activity that you can do inside? 
in the winter time in Wisconsin? It looks like someone said go to the YMCA. Yep. If you have one of those near you, some people have an anytime fitness near them. Those are indoor options. Um, let's see. Someone said that they're going to do a 40 mile challenge by riding their tricycle for Special Olympics, which 40 miles is more, is their ultimate goal. I know who that is. Good job, Richard. That's awesome. You know, I know people who exercise inside, they find um, exercise videos on YouTube. So uh, YouTube is a great place to find whatever you like to do, whether it's yoga or dancing or weightlifting. Uh, there's different sorts of walking exercises that you can do indoors. You can find a lot of different exercise on YouTube. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about SMART goals. I want to show you one more video about setting those SMART goals to get you thinking about how you might set a goal for yourself. Here we go. Goal setting is a powerful tool in increasing productivity. In fact, setting goals can increase your productivity by 11 to 25%. But actually setting and working towards goals can be challenging. So let's get smart about goals. S, specific. Ask yourself what you want to accomplish. And most importantly, why? M, make it measurable. Are you able to tell when you've reached your goal? A, attainable. Goals should stretch you so you feel excited, but within your current ability. R, relevant. Set goals that are going to positively impact your life. Does this goal fit in with your other life's goals and dreams? T, time-based. A goal with a time deadline will create a sense of urgency and give you the energy you need to complete it. Finally, once you achieve your goal, it's time to celebrate and set the next goal. Hey, Sydney, do you want to put the SMART goals sheet in the chat? So Sydney's going to add a link into the chat to this worksheet. And this is something that you can print out at home and use to type in your own goals. So um, it has different boxes for all those areas of goal setting that we talked about. So you again, you want to make sure that it's something specific that you can actually count or measure in some way. So here's some more examples. I want, well, like Sydney said, I want to eat more vegetables and fruits each week. Then you might write down how many, how often do you want to eat them? And then by when do you want to say that you've achieved that goal? Um, maybe you have a goal of walking in a race that's going to happen in your town in the springtime. Maybe you know about an event a walk or a run that happens every year. I know around Halloween, a lot of um, communities have Halloween races. Sometimes there are walks or runs for different causes, or, um, you know, they're like uh, one of our friends just said that they're going to participate in a Special Olympics event. Maybe there's something like that that's happening near you. Make that your goal and then start practicing um, how you're going to be able to walk that distance by the time the race comes around. Uh, maybe it's about starting a new hobby that's going to help you make new friends, whether that's online, maybe you'll join one of Sydney's self-advocacy Facebook groups. That's a good virtual way to meet new people, or maybe it's something in your community like going to a, a bowling league, or I know in my town, people are doing this thing called pickleball, which I had never heard of before, but that's something new. So just see what's happening in your community and try something new to meet some new friends. But make sure you go in the chat, get the link to this worksheet, and then try to write down some goals for yourself to do some things that are gonna make you healthier for the new year, right? 2022 is right around the corner. All right, so something that um, 
Sydney and I do every time we do this class with people is we have exercise time. So at the end of our time today, we're gonna to tell you how you can sign up for the, um, the actual Health Matters class that we do every spring for the ARC Wisconsin. And this is one of the things that we do. So feel free to do this with us. So Cindy and I are gonna stand up and we're gonna do our march in place exercise. So feel free to join us. We're just taking our knees and making sure we can touch our knees to our hands. And you know what? Oh, good job, Josh. If you do this, I, honestly, if you do this often enough, you're going to start huffing, puffing a little bit. And you can speed it up if you want, but this is just fine pace. And if you're sitting, you can do this too. All right. Oh, I've got some people at ACAP joining us. I love that. Who else do I see here? I see a Katie. Very good. I like it. Pam putting in the effort. Excellent. All right. Next one. Arm circles. Oh, this one feels good, man. I like this. What do you think, Sydney? Yeah. This is a good after lunch thing. Who am I seeing on my screen here? Christina, good job. All right, let's go back. I didn't really wear the right exercise clothes today, people. Ah, oh, feels good. Nice stretch. Next one. Oh, here we go. The torso stretch. Just do a little twist. We could add some dance moves at 430. Maybe we're doing a little twisting. 430 today for the dance. What do you guys think? Like I said, when we do this class, we do these exercises. So all that's, I'm just gonna stop torturing you now. Thank you for enjoying the exercise with Sydney and me. Great job to those who are participating. So um, Sydney and I were glad to just give you a taste of what the ARC Wisconsin Academy is all about. Um, we like to have fun, right, Sydney? Yeah. So in our spring class, um, what we did today was a little taste of what we do kind of walk through in every lesson. We talk about what it means to be healthy. We talk about exercise. We talk more about food groups and healthy foods and foods that maybe you shouldn't eat so much of. We do share lots of ideas on food swaps um, and the benefits of healthy eating. We do polling, we tell stories, we have fun quizzes, we play games. And we are always, always, always setting and working on goals. The good news about our class is that people who have taken this class actually have lost weight or lowered their blood pressure or made other lifestyle changes. So it really is a good way to learn more about uh, being healthier. Um, registration's not yet open for the spring class. So I would say if what you learned today makes you interested in taking the class with Sydney and me, um, you've got to sign up and your payment is due by April 1st. So it's a paid class, it's not free. But the good news is if you use family care or IRIS programs, we do have people in our class whose, um, whose tuition is paid for uh, through the family care or IRIS program. So um, that's where you would talk to your uh, care manager or your IRIS consultant and say, I'm really interested in this class. I wanna check it out. So um, know that we, the, again, the class starts in April. So you could even talk to your family care care manager or IRIS consultant now about um, your interest in the class and get signed up and see Sydney as your teacher. Um, we've had quite a few people that have gone through our classes. We do teach one in the fall that's around self-advocacy leadership. So you just saw the one that was for health today, but here's what some people are saying. I'm learning that truly anyone can be a self-advocate and that you can start being a self-advocate at any age in your life. I'm also learning what my goal is and the history of being a self-advocate in Wisconsin. 
Um, somebody else said being a self-advocate means being able to advocate for yourself, being able to explain and understand how to advocate for yourself and why it is important to be a self-advocate. Um, somebody else said, I recommend this class to anyone able and willing to take it. It is a great learning opportunity for anyone that wants to learn more about being better at advocating for themselves. So we have a lot of fun in our classes. Um, we've, uh, is, we're going into our second year right now. We have about 12 students in our self-advocacy class this fall. So here's just a little more about the cost. So don't be afraid by the cost. Um, it's something again that you can talk to your IRS or family care, um, care manager about if it fits in your plan. And you can always talk to us about if there's scholarship opportunities too. So that is about the class. And now, of course, we want to know what you thought about today's presentation. Do we say, do Sydney and I get a thumbs up or, or uh, oh yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I see some thumbs up. Okay. Does anybody, I'm gonna stop sharing so we can chat together. Um, does anybody have any questions for Sydney or I, or is there anything else coming in the chat, Sid? Um, it looks like someone asked if we talk about mental health in our classes. We don't talk specifically about mental health. We do talk about how being active and eating healthy, getting enough sleep, having good relationships with other people helps you to be healthier, but we do not talk specifically about mental health. We um, probably don't have the expertise to do that as well as what would be necessary. I, I feel, this is Melissa, um, I feel better um, uh, with how to take care of my health. So thank you. Oh, I'm glad. Did you get some food ideas? Yes, Melissa? I did, yes. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you for coming. Yes. Melissa, all the way from Door County. Yes, and I was going to say, does it count if I don't count my calories today because it's my birthday? <laughs> I hope you're eating some healthy things too on your birthday, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Anybody else with anything you want to say about our session or any questions? Yes, yes, I do. I'm sorry. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I'm sorry. I've been very quiet, but I was listening. And what is this class called again? So the, our class that we teach regularly is called Health Matters. Health Matters, you said? Yep. Um, okay. Health Matters sounds like a pretty nice class. Thank and you. how much? And you're welcome. And um, how much do we pay for it? So hopefully you could get it included in either your iris or your family care plan. And it's about $275. Um, I think that's kind of expensive, but I'll talk with mom about it. I hear ya. I'll talk with my not iris because I don't have iris, but I might have family care or another agency. It's worth asking about. Yeah, I guess so. But what if they don't want to pay for that? Well, we're looking at ways to get scholarships for people too. So don't rule it out. Well, okay, I'll try not to. Okay. And how do can, we can apply he... for a scholarship? So um, <laughs> we'll, we can talk after the fact, Jenny. If you're interested, I can be in contact with you. And um, Sydney, do you want to put our emails in the chat? Can you do that? Uh, yes. Can you please do that? Yeah, let's, let's put our emails in the chat so people can contact us. Let me just look yours up real quick. <laughs> oh, you know what? I can do it for you. Okay. So you can you just put yours in there. I'm going to put my email in the chat. Okay. And then you can find me. But Jennifer, I think you know how to find me anyway. Um, yes, I can find you and see me on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is easier, right? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, right. so Desi, Desi, it'd be awesome to have you in the class. We're all about having fun and being healthy. So any other questions yeah. or comments, please put them in the chat. Yes, yes, I'll think about it. For now, I can't because of work. 
then sure. I'll be working a lot. So I have to like arrange my schedule and stuff. Sure. I also need to be a little more organized. <laughs> with my we, all, we all can be more organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Anyone so. else with questions <laughs> or comments besides Jenny? I don't know about you, Cindy, but I sure love seeing all these smiling faces in here. Yeah, me too. I enjoyed it. Yes, me too. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, thanks, Chad, my friend Chad. I see well, thanks, Sierra everyone. joining us. Folks, you should turn on your camera so I can see your beautiful faces. Josh, yes. Josh. Hi, Carrie. Olivia, I haven't seen you. Desi. I miss all you guys. Nice. Well, you know what? I have to get to an exhibit room. If you want to keep chatting with me. Hi, Jenny. Um, thanks for turning on your camera, girl. Um, I'm going to get to my exhibit room. If you want to come into 